Get out of this house, she demanded, her voice cold and unwavering. I barely had time to react before she added, besides, I already have a plan for a new life for him. My mother-in-law, who never wanted to change, had concocted an outrageous scheme. With a triumphant smirk, she said, you incompetent wife at your divorce. Something snapped inside me. You'll regret saying that, I retorted. Regret? Why should I? She laughed dismissively. Because this house, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. My name is Kelly, and I'm 34 years old. After graduating from college, I landed a job as an engineer at a major company. Since then, I've poured my heart into my work. It was during this period that I met Tommy, who would eventually become my husband. When I was 28, I encountered him through work. He was a salesman who frequently visited our office. Tommy was always friendly, greeting me with a warm smile even though our paths rarely crossed directly. It was at a company social event that we truly connected. The person in charge of our account had a high regard for Tommy, and after a brief introduction, extended an invitation for him to join us that evening. Tommy and I discovered we had much in common. We exchanged contact details and soon began dating. Two years later, we married. Our relationship has been a source of immense joy and support. Tommy has been my rock, especially when I face significant decisions like starting my own business. When I was contemplating leaving my job to freelance, I was filled with doubt. The uncertainties about steady income and potential vacations weighed heavily on me. But Tommy encouraged me, saying, if you really want to do this, then go ahead and try. I'll support you no matter what. Despite my cautious nature, I took the plunge and resigned from my job. To my surprise, my freelance work took off beyond my expectations. My prior experience made me a trusted professional, and I began handling significant projects with a much higher income than before. Tommy and I were thrilled with the growth in our savings. While I was ecstatic about the financial success, what truly made me happy was his unwavering support. With him by my side, I felt I could tackle any challenge. These days, we enjoy traveling and driving together on his days off. We still save diligently but also allow ourselves the occasional splurge. Our life together is fulfilling and joyful. Then one day, while working from home, I started feeling unwell. When the discomfort persisted, I went to the hospital for a checkup. To my astonishment, I discovered I was pregnant. That evening, as I waited anxiously for Tommy to come home, I could hardly contain my excitement. When he arrived, I immediately shared the news. I went to the hospital today, I said, a mix of nervousness and excitement in my voice. Oh, I see, he replied, his tone unexpectedly subdued. I'm sorry I could have followed you there. How did it go? My husband asked as he hung up his suit jacket. I chuckled softly and replied, they told me I'm pregnant. He paused, staring at me in surprise. What? Seriously? Yes, I confirmed, beaming. I'm pregnant. A wide smile spread across his face. Really? We did it. Thank you, Kelly. His joy was infectious and I couldn't help but share in his excitement. We eagerly anticipated welcoming our baby together committed to doing our best as a family. As we sat down to enjoy the dinner I had prepared, my husband continued to talk animatedly about our future child. We discussed the baby's potential gender and began dreaming about baby items. If it's a boy, he said, I want to teach him to play catch, and if it's a girl, I'd love to play house with her. I decided it was the right moment to share a thought that had been on my mind. How about we build a house soon? He looked puzzled. What do you mean? Well, I explained, we've saved up quite a bit of money. With a baby on the way, our current place might be too small. It could be a good time to invest in a new home. We could have a bigger space for the baby to play, a dedicated room for my work. Doesn't that sound dreamy? He nodded, clearly pleased with the idea. Yes, it does. We'll have a beautiful, spacious home for our new baby. 
we decided to start planning our new house immediately. On weekends, we visited open houses and worked on floor plans, aiming to complete the house before the baby arrived. About a month after learning about the pregnancy, we planned a visit to my in-laws to share the news. I felt a pang of unease. My relationship with my mother-in-law had always been strained. The drive to their house was about 30 minutes, but I saw them visit during our early marriage. I'd made an effort to visit for Thanksgiving and New Year's. However, my mother-in-law frequently criticized my career, saying things like, you're too focused on your job, and when are you going to give us grandchildren? Her comments were often harsh. All you do is sit at your computer, Peter. Don't you? I don't like you because you're kind of a nerd. Tommy's a great communicator as a salesman, but his wife is like this. Despite my efforts, she failed to understand that my interest in computers was the reason behind my job. While I didn't have poor communication skills, her words stung. She only masked her true feelings when my husband and father-in-law were around, putting on a facade of politeness. Her heartless remarks made in private left me bitter and wary. Gradually, I had been avoiding my mother-in-law, visiting her less frequently. However, this time I had no choice but to go since we were sharing the news of our baby's arrival. She had often asked if I had any children yet, so I hoped she would be pleased to hear the news. With a mix of anxiety and anticipation, my husband drove me to my in-law's house. My mother-in-law greeted me with her usual blank expression, but her demeanor shifted immediately when my husband spoke. Mom, it's been a long time, he said warmly. Her face lit up with a smile and her tone brightened. Oh, Kelly, it's been ages. I hope you've been well. Yes, I've been fine, I replied, trying to match her cheerful tone. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, too. Come on in, both of you. She invited us with forced enthusiasm. As we entered the living room, my father-in-law welcomed us warmly, saying, Oh, you've come a long way. I was about to sit on the sofa with my husband to chat with my father-in-law when my mother-in-law asked me to help with serving tea. I followed her to the kitchen, feeling a pang of discomfort. In the kitchen, my mother-in-law's demeanor changed completely. She looked at me coldly and said, I haven't seen your irritating face in a while. I suppose you're still doing that lowly job of yours. I hear you plan to keep working even after the baby is born. I hope you're not going to make a foolish decision like that. Her harsh words stung, but I had to endure them. When I returned to the living room to serve tea, her attitude shifted again. In front of my husband and father-in-law, she was all smiles and acted like the perfect mother-in-law. When my husband announced my pregnancy, her reaction was a facade of joy. I'm so happy, Kelly. Thank you. I can't wait to meet my grandchild. You're such a wonderful daughter-in-law. Her sudden change in attitude was bewildering, but I forced a smile in response. I was eager to leave after sharing the news. I just needed to navigate the conversation with polite responses and get out of there. Unexpectedly, something happened during the conversation that caught me off guard. It all began with a seemingly casual comment from my father-in-law. Won't your current room feel a bit cramped once the baby arrives? My husband, excited about the prospect of a new house, enthusiastically mentioned that we were considering building one. My mother-in-law, who had been quiet until then, perked up immediately. You're building a house, she asked, her tone oddly cheerful. I had a sinking feeling about where this was heading. Then my mother-in-law made a surprise suggestion. Let's make it a two-family house. My husband and I were caught off guard. What are you talking about, mother? He asked, his confusion evident. But my mother-in-law continued as if she hadn't noticed our reaction. Since this house is getting old anyway, we could talk about either renovating it or selling it. If we convert it into a two-family house, we could support Kelly during her pregnancy and live with our grandchildren. Don't you think? My father-in-law, still puzzled, responded, well, it would be nice to live with the grandchildren, wouldn't it? 
My mother-in-law, as if she had prepared a convincing argument, added, Exactly. It's not easy when you have a baby, especially since you plan to keep working after the baby is born, Kelly. It would be reassuring if I were around to help with the housework and childcare. Her pressure was palpable, and I could feel myself flinch. My husband, sensing my discomfort, said, Well, it's an important decision, so we'll need to think about it. We should be heading home now that we've shared the news, he added, signaling it was time for us to leave. I was surprised by how excited my mother-in-law was about the news, but it was a relief to see her happy about the birth of our child. Despite her enthusiasm, I still felt apprehensive about living together. My past experiences with her left me doubtful. However, since then, my mother-in-law seemed to have changed her approach. She stopped the harsh comments and began regularly sending me emails to check on my health. Her texts were kind and considerate, without any of the unnecessary remarks I had grown accustomed to. I started to wonder if she had genuinely changed her attitude. After a long absence, I visited my in-laws for Thanksgiving, and their warmth was unexpected. Even when we were alone, she was kind and supportive. This newfound kindness made me reconsider my stance. When my husband asked me about the possibility of living together in the new house, I was more open to the idea. The deadline for completing the house was approaching quickly, and we needed to make a decision. I had been working closely with my mother-in-law, who had been increasingly kind. It began to feel like living in the same house might be manageable, especially with her help around the house and with childcare. I even started to think it would be beneficial to have her support. Let's go ahead and build the two-family house, I suggested to my husband. He looked surprised. Is that really a good idea? You've always had issues with my mom. He was carefully observing my reaction. While I still had reservations about her, I was reassured by how she had been treating me recently. I think we could make it work. Now she's been very kind, and it seems like we can get along. My husband seemed relieved. I'm glad you feel that way. You're right. My mother can be a bit challenging, but I believe she'll help with the kids. We returned to the construction company to modify our plans for the two-family house. Since we had already settled on the floor plans, we expanded the rooms to accommodate the new arrangement. The process went smoothly, and we even visited the construction site with my in-laws. I was looking forward to the lively new chapter with the arrival of our child. I was thrilled as we prepared to move into our new home. Construction was underway, and I was nearing the last trimester of my pregnancy. The excitement of starting this new chapter in our lives was palpable, and my in-laws seemed genuinely supportive. A few months later, I successfully gave birth to a healthy baby girl. My husband and in-laws were overjoyed as we awaited the completion of our new house. Anticipation grew. Finally, the house was ready. My husband and I brought our daughter to our new home for the first time. Coincidentally, my in-laws arrived at the same time, and together we entered the house with eager excitement. The new home was stunning, spacious, and beautifully designed. Just walking through it filled me with joy. Both my husband and father-in-law quickly settled into their new rooms, their faces beaming with contentment. Then I was called to the kitchen by my mother-in-law. Come here for a minute, Kelly, she said. I was surprised to find her at our house, but I went to the kitchen as requested. What's wrong, Gemma? I asked, puzzled. What do you mean? I can finally tell you, she said coldly. I want you to leave this house. I was taken aback, unable to grasp what was happening. My mother-in-law continued with a disdainful tone reminiscent of the past. I didn't want to be kind to you, but I tolerated you because Tommy was building me a house. It's been tough these past six months, but now my efforts have paid off. What do you mean? I managed to ask, my voice trembling. I've never liked you. You kept your job even after having a child, and to top it off, it's a girl. You promised to help with the housework and childcare, but that was a lie to manipulate Tommy into doing what I wanted. 
Now that the house is built, you're no longer needed. Divorce Tommy. My heart sank, and I already have a new wife in mind for him. What? I gasped, shocked. She's the daughter of an acquaintance of mine. She wants to be a housewife, so I plan to arrange for her to marry Tommy in this house. I was stunned into silence. My mother-in-law's cruel plans were far from what I had expected. Her face was a mask of triumph as she declared, You incompetent wife, get a divorce and leave right now. At that moment, something inside me snapped. There would be no forgiveness for her cruelty. You'll regret saying that, I said, my voice shaking. Regret? Why? She asked with a mocking tone. Because this house, I began, but before I could finish, my husband arrived. Hey, Mom, I heard what you just said. What do you mean you're kicking Kelly out and planning to replace her? He demanded. My mother-in-law looked momentarily startled by his interruption, but quickly resumed her stance. I'm only doing this for your own good, she said dismissively. My husband's face was a mix of anger and confusion as he stood up to his mother. The tension was palpable, and I knew that the future of our family was hanging in the balance. I don't want this weak woman living in your house. Get a new wife who is young and can give birth to a son, my mother-in-law said with cold disdain. My husband's face turned pale as he confronted her. What are you talking about? Kelly is the one who built this house. It's in her name. My mother-in-law's eyes widened in disbelief. That's a lie. No, it's not, my husband said firmly, his disgust evident. I've explained this before. Kelly's income increased significantly when she became a freelancer. She makes enough to buy a house. What are you talking about? My mother-in-law asked, confused. Kelly earns about ten times more than I do, my husband continued, his voice rising. She makes about three million a month. My mother-in-law's jaw dropped. Clearly, she had no idea about my earnings and was taken aback by the revelation. Just then, my father-in-law arrived looking for us. I was wondering where you went and thought you might be here. What's going on? He asked, noticing the tension. My husband told my father-in-law everything. My mother-in-law had said his face reddened with anger. So you've been treating Kelly like this? You've been bullying her? That's unacceptable. My mother-in-law was visibly shaken by his reaction. Kelly, please be honest with me. Has my wife been mistreating you? I told my father-in-law everything honestly. How my mother-in-law had been difficult from the start of our marriage and only pretended to be kind during the house construction. His disappointment was clear as he glared at her. I'm already disappointed in you. I'm divorcing you. What? My mother-in-law stammered. I don't want to be with someone who can't care for the person important to her son. He declared, if I'm going to retire, I want to be with someone who genuinely cares. I will not be miserable in my old age. You're the one leaving. I'm divorcing you now. My mother-in-law was devastated and began to cry, unable to stand, but no one sided with her. My husband helped her into my father-in-law's car, and my father-in-law apologized to me before returning to their house. It turned out their house was already on the market, and he had expedited the move-out date to prepare for the worst. He served my mother-in-law with divorce papers and moved into our new duplex. At first, Dean was hesitant to live with us, but given our positive impression of him, we invited him to stay. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law left with no job and no support, moving into a cheap, shabby apartment. The marriage arrangement she had hoped for with her acquaintance's daughter and my husband was also cancelled. Her untrustworthiness and attempts to meddle had left her isolated and she quickly lost all her connections. Though I'm not sure what she has done since, I imagine her life is now quite difficult. On the other hand, our family of four is thriving. My father-in-law and husband dote on our daughter, and happiness fills our home. Each day, we look forward to continuing our lives together, supporting each other, and enjoying our newfound peace.